Setting up your new business comes with a lot of fun firsts, and this first is probably one of the most satisfying. Choosing your website name, otherwise known as your domain name. But before you jump in and make a commitment here, I've got some tips on what you need to consider because believe it or not, choosing the wrong domain name can actually hurt your business. And there is definitely a lot of contradictory information floating around out there. So I'm here to set a few things straight in this video. So I'm gonna be giving you a practical checklist of what to do, what to avoid, and what to prioritize so you can get it dialed in just right. So let's get started with number one, make it short and memorable. It's no surprise that the longer and more complicated your domain name is, the more chance there's gonna be of people either not remembering it, aside from remembering it was just a super long name, or jumbling it up when they type it in or attempt to share it. So it's probably not a good idea to use the name of every doctor in your medical practice in your URL. And I have seen those kinds of domain names out there before and it ain't pretty. The key here is just to keep it as short as you possibly can while still keeping it, you know, unique and catchy. All right, time for tip two, dot com versus dot something else. The truth is a lot of domain names you might want are probably already taken, unfortunately, at least in the dot com variety. I hear it all the time. People start saying, okay, I'll just opt for the dot net or ooh, the dot design sounds perfect for me, um, which is actually a real extension that you can buy. So in fact, a new cottage industry has emerged this past decade with all these new, uh, what we call top level domain extensions, right? Some of them actually sound kind of trendy and cool and others are certainly specific like dot lawyer, which seems like it'd be a great fit for a law firm, right? Or a dot farm, which may work perfect if you own a few of these guys. But I don't recommend them for one very simple reason. People just have a built-in association with dot coms. So much so that if you told them to go to the website, websitesbywest.net, most people would remember that as websitesbywest.com. So if your .com isn't available, rather than just calling it .net, I recommend first trying to edit the name of the .com slightly if you possibly can. And if you really can't land on anything acceptable as a .com, my second choice would be the either .net or even .co. I personally would opt out for the more clever ones because most people will just be confused by any of those, right? They'd see annie'scandy.shop and think, wait, they probably mean annie'scandyshop.com, right? And then when that doesn't work, you, my friend, just lost out on a customer. Bummer. Okay, number three, avoid hyphens and double letters. And this is really for the same reason that you'd avoid a .biz or a .tv domain extension they lead to lots of cases of mistaken identity. Hyphenated domains are really likely to result in typos. So if you were to choose one with hyphens because the .com you want is already taken, then your users are likely just gonna show up on the doorstep of your competitor's website if and when they forget to type in the hyphen. Not to mention, hyphenated domain names just look kind of spammy and untrustworthy. And you also want to avoid double letters if you possibly can. And you definitely want to avoid the dreaded triple letter because again, typos. Take a look at this domain, coffeeexplosion.com. Now, the two Fs and even the two Es in coffee don't bother me that much since they belong to the same word. Where we run into trouble here is when the last letter of word one is the same as the first letter of word two. Psychologically, it can be tricky and people just happen to make a lot of mistakes when they type something like this in. So just try to sidestep it if you possibly can. All right, number four, going for something classy and branded versus something more keyword rich. Now, this is probably one of the biggest debates when it comes to domain names. So what are the pros and cons for each of these? For example, how likely would you be to click through to bestpubsinboston.com versus bostonhops.com. One feels more like a legit business because it's branded, and one feels like you're gonna click through to a roundup style blog article, right? 
But choosing something that's purely branded can also hold you back when it comes to Google rankings and in search. But when you're a new website, you need all the help you can get there. And make no mistake, exact match domain names that include the keywords you're trying to rank for do give you an edge still to this day. And that's why I recommend a blended approach by using what we call a partial match domain name that combines your business name, possibly abbreviated or shortened, and your top keyword phrase, something like bhpubboston.com. So in this example, the BH is your branding and pub Boston are your keywords. You know, the key here is just to find that happy medium between keywords and a version of your business name. Now, if you've got your domain name all ready to go and you're ready to set up your website to go along with it, the next video will walk you through the steps you need to get up and running in just a few minutes. So click right here and I'll see you there.